there has been a study published recently that I actually quoted in one of my articles. Uh, the study by Mitchell and Al uh, explained that basically what they did was compare three different training protocols. The two most interesting ones were in one group, they used 30% of their maximum, and the other group used 80% of their maximum. Now, both group did three sets, and in all of these sets, they went to muscle failure to a point where they could not complete one more repetition. And what they found was that at the conclusion of the study, both group had pretty much the same amount of muscle growth. The conclusion was, if you go to muscle failure, the load, the amount of weight used, doesn't matter that much for muscle growth. Now, according to that study, it is obviously true. I want to mention, so, so it, we could probably say that using light weights or using heavy weights, using very high reps or using low reps will work the same when it comes to building muscle. Uh, I don't agree. Even though the study would seem to point toward that, there are some elements we need to discuss. The first element is that the study only used one exercise, the leg extension. So the amount of volume per session was very low. Even if they did 30 reps, for example, with the light weights, it was still only three sets of one exercise uh, so that's not enough to get the downside of excessive training volume, right? I always said that excessive training volume is the number one enemy of the natural trainee because too much volume increases cortisol a lot, which stops muscle growth in a natural trainee. So higher volume, very high reps, for example, will certainly fall in that category, even though in theory it can still recruit maximum muscle fibers because of the fatigue, in reality, I'm burning tons of fuel to get the same training effect. My belief is that uh, to stimulate maximum growth, you need repetitions where you have full or almost full muscle fiber recruitment, and enough of these repetitions to fully fatigue the fast switch fibers who are the most prone to getting larger and stronger. Now, you can do that by using a heavy weight. As soon as you are using 80%, you are pretty much recruiting maximum muscle fibers from that first rep. You, then, you will fatigue them on every single rep. Or, I could use lighter weights let's say for example 50%, the first five, eight reps would not recruit all my fibers, but I would build up fatigue, 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 and at one point my muscle is so fatigued, I don't have a choice but to recruit the fast switch fibers to complete the set. So in that sense, if I do 15 reps, I might still have five reps that are money reps, but I'm doing 10 reps just to get there. And those 10 reps require fuel, require glycogen. And the more glycogen I burn, the more cortisol I release. Now, if I'm doing a scientific protocol using only one exercise, that will not lead to a significant increase in cortisol. But if I'm applying that to a real training program, let's say I'm doing four or five exercises three sets of each, and I'm doing 30 reps to failure, then I'm burning so much glycogen that cortisol will go to the roof. So I will not get the same hypertrophy benefits if I, as if I were using lower reps. If I'm using 80% of my max, I'm recruiting the money fibers right from the start. So I'm doing two, three, even four times less work to get the same stimulation. If I'm only doing one exercise, I will get the same result. But if I'm doing a real, actual program of several exercises that triple the amount of work here 
will lead to such a drastic increase in cortisol and energy expenditure that I will not get maximum muscle growth. The increase in AMPK, the increase in cortisol will inhibit the stimulation of protein synthesis. That's why even though in theory, right, in scientific settings, the high reps work just as well as low reps if I go to failure. In reality, using a real training program, doing that amount of work just to get to the money reps will completely destroy the growth stimulus. That's one example of science being good to give us some clues, but it can't be applied to real, real life blindly. So yes, in theory, mega high reps will work to stimulate muscle growth. In reality, if that's your whole program is built around that, it will lead to excessive glycogen use, excessive um, energy expenditure, and excessive cortisol release that will prevent you from getting maximum gains. For a natural trainee, I believe that staying on the lowish, lowish side of the reps six to 10 reps, for example, per set, would be the best zone to train for maximum muscle growth, training to failure on at least one set per exercise. <music>